Let's go ahead and get it rolling. Holly, go ahead and take the roll call, please. Director False. Here. Director Henry. Here. Director Moran. Present. Director Ferris. Present. President Swan. Here. Okay, terrific. Uh, Rick, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has no uh, additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. Okay. Now is the uh, time for oral communication. So if any of the attendees, and it looks like we have about six, have any uh, things that they would like to comment on that's not on the agenda, please raise your uh, hand and we'll recognize you. And I see no hands, so we'll move on to uh, unfinished business. Oh, Rick, where do we go from here? Okay, um, let me just quick open this up. Um, tonight we have uh, Amy Holworth, who is with the Municipal Resource Group, who provided the district's uh, governance training uh, the workshop of July 22nd. Uh, she's here to do a training debriefing uh, with the board. And with that, I will turn it over to Amy. First off, Amy, thanks for coming tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure. It's great, great to be with all of you again. Uh, I guess we're all getting used to this Zoom world. So as Rick mentioned, uh, Municipal Resource Group is the firm that I work for. We work contracted to fulfill a 2016 grand jury requirement to hold a workshop on dealing with contentious issues. And I know the board knows all this, uh, but I do want to let those in the public understand what we did. Um, since this board is completely different than the board from 2016 and the general manager is different than the general manager in 2016, I suggested framing the workshop around good governance practices rather than simply dealing with contentious issues. Because I think for the most part, this board is, well, I, I'm quite confident you're doing a much better job than a prior board was on that topic. So, uh, you know, with the goal that, you know, constant attention to good governance will help prevent contention that is toxic. So that was how I framed the workshop. So for the public uh, to understand, I had traveled up to Boulder Creek in February and spent over an hour with each board member individually, mm -hmm. talking to them, asking them the same questions, listening to them. I spent lots of time on the phone with uh, the general manager, Rick, of course. And I also consulted with uh, the council, uh, Gina Nichols, uh, on a couple of uh, different uh, occasions so that I could understand uh, what the, the requirements had been, but also what was going on currently. And I gotta tell you, uh, I see a group of people that really care about their community and are really, really committed to working hard to make things better for all the San Lorenzo Valley ratepayers. So I was all geared up to design a, a workshop and come back in person in March and about nine days before that happened, uh, the state basically shut down. And I think we all still held out hope, well, maybe maybe it'll be three weeks, maybe it'll be a month longer. So we, we kept postponing in the hopes that I could actually come back up there and do this in person like we're all used to. And uh, finally, uh, I think the decision, I think you all had a discussion, frankly, let's do it virtually. It was no one's first choice to wanna to do this virtually, uh, but, I commend the board uh, for pushing forward and, and making this happen. You not only fulfilled the requirement, but I think it's good practice to check in on all this stuff every now and then. And I think the public uh, should understand that, that this board was committed to this process. So I did, I did the interviews, I did research, um, looking at a lot of the board minutes, the grand jury report, various news articles, um, to try to understand what had happened and then what was what was needed now. Um, I also prepared uh, the board members for the workshop by sending them lots of 
free work as if they don't have enough to do to get ready for regular board meetings. I sent them about seven articles and I sort of apologize for that, but I actually, I was surprised uh, and pleased that this board did their work because they had all, they all commented on different aspects of those articles. So just so the public understands the nature of this work, um, there was an article um, beyond ethics, establishing a code of conduct to guide your counsel. We looked at the work that Scotts Valley had done in the past uh, in creating their best practices. We, uh, there was an article on exceptional counsels. Well, this is a board, the same principles apply. Uh, 10 traits of effective leadership. And one that I think really seemed to um, resonate and maybe I'm wrong was 10 traits of an effective council member from the Municipal Research and Services Center. Um, and so that's kind of how we began the talk. So I broke down our workshop into the following subject matter areas. So we talked about the attributes of the ideal governing board member. Um, and then we talked a lot about the notion of campaigning and how that's different than governing because we're in election season or campaign season, right? You probably have people that are signed up to run for your board seats. And I think that is a very uh, good thing to keep top of mind right now. Uh, we had a contentious issues discussion. Uh, we talked a bit about board member and staff roles, defining those and the differences in those. And I thought that we would uh, create some team norms at the end of the day based on all these discussions. And, you know, truly, uh, you all didn't seem to think, and I, that's fine, I agree with you, it's not wrong, that you didn't need any additional team norms beyond uh, the code of conduct, uh, code of civility that you have in your board policies. So, so that's how I broke it down. And despite the fact that we did this all via Zoom, I was pleased uh, that we did have discussion. Uh, it, in some ways, I actually feel like as the facilitator, I could see you all a little better and get a read, you know, because that's what you're really trying to do is trying to say, hey, you know, Lou seems like he wants to say something here. And I, I really felt that I could actually see that better than if I was in a room standing back here and trying to capture what you all were feeling. And so, you know, I think despite its challenges, it's hard sometimes muting, unmuting for all of us. I think it went really well from my point of view. Um, we launched right into the ideal board member based on some of those articles. And I just, I want to remind you all what you said, not what I said, but what went up on the whiteboard, the Zoom whiteboard, which I found challenging, but I mastered, I think. So you said uh, collectively, I, I can't remember who said what, uh, the ideal board member represents everyone in a district, whether they voted for you or not. Um, the ideal board member listens openly. Uh, and I, I think that that meant that avoids premature bias, is really trying to just hear what the speaker is saying and not try to assume the intent of the speaker. The ideal board member has uh, a history of community involvement. Uh, the ideal board member respects everyone, respects staff and staff's time, and uh, ideally they would have experience with water issues or be willing to learn. And what you all said was you really couldn't believe how much time it takes to be a good board member, right? That when you're campaigning, it, you know, we all know campaigns can be uh, intense. Uh, and you think it takes a lot of time, but then you realize how much there is to do as a board member, how much there is to learn, how much there is to, you know, be on top of and aware of. And again, you're, you're also committed to the district. You're willing to spend that time. So very commendable. So pivoting to campaigning versus governing, here's what you said. Um, again, this is not good or bad, but you make campaign promises. And so then can you fulfill those promises? Are they possible? Um, you know, did you know everything that you now know as you're governing? Maybe, maybe not. Um, 
you learn, uh, and again, you learn when you're elected how much time it takes. So going back to what I said, um, in a campaign, you're trying to win, and we talked about differentiating yourself from other candidates or even the current board. And when governing, you're trying to find common ground, right, to build consensus or get the votes. And we talked a little bit about how differentiating isn't necessarily divisive or contentious. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So um, I appreciated that um, conversation. Um, also, the notion that the people that you're running against in a campaign are opponents, um, but people are running to do the best they can for the district. And um, campaign is short term, governing is long term. And at the end of the day, governing in public is really hard, right? That's, I think, very hard. So these were all your comments. I had plenty, but I, I want you to understand what, that you actually really did talk about all this stuff. So um, again, there wasn't consensus that you guys needed a separate code of conduct for your meetings. I know that when I came in February, uh, I had a lot of questions posed to me from various board members about how would I handle this? How do I, is it okay for me to say this? Is it, and you know, I have been for the public, I didn't really explain. I was an elected official for 16 years. So I spent eight years on a school board in Manhattan Beach, California, and eight years on the city council. And so I, I have my own kind of toolkit. So I was really, you know, helping people along. Um, so I, what I found is that between February and July, a lot of you had either taken to heart what I had said or found the experience such that you were able to now say, I don't want to say anybody's name because it wasn't any one person, but you know, hey, Joe, okay, you made that point, let's move on. Like you felt like you had language and confidence and that governing and public thing you were starting to be able to do. Um, so I was, I was really grateful to see that. Um, you are as a whole interested in creating an atmosphere that avoids toxic contention. And I use the word toxic because there was also uh, an opinion that contention isn't always a bad thing. And I would, I only disagree because it's a definition of a word and that contention to me is a more angry disagreement, but certainly disagreement is not bad. And I encouraged during this session when we were talking about code of conduct for meetings that you really use the Brown Act as a tool for transparency and also how to speak and interact with the public because when you public comment is made, it's so natural to want to respond to it, um, especially if it is, and we talked about this, if it's somebody says something completely erroneous or offensive and, you know, just to technically you can say certain things, it's your right, but to figure out ways to do that, that is uh, listening to the audience member because they have concerns and they may be really angry at you. It doesn't mean they're wrong, but it's still unpleasant. So trying to understand how to do that and using the Brown Act uh, to facilitate that. Uh, I We talked about how it's, it's still okay to ask questions of the public speaker. Clarifying questions are great. Um, and the last thing we sort of talked about in that whole area is that there's a real spectrum of how different board members, this board, deal with pointed criticism. It's not easy, no matter what, no matter how thick-skinned you are, no matter how much of a sense of humor you have. Um, it's it's really hard, but um, people have to allow uh, allow people in the public to say what they're going to say. So those were my the 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 whiteboard notes um, that you all came up with, and the last point I want to make, uh, and it seems like I am going to take up your whole time, uh, hopefully not too late, is that I want the public to really appreciate how hard it is to be, uh, say, an elected official and do your business in public, like all of you have to do, right? Um, and, and how to have a workshop such as this, you know, all, all of you, I believe, have been in private enterprise where you've had a workshop or a facilitator come in and it's 
you can talk about things and in a business setting, but that's private. It's not public. Uh, there aren't political political ramifications in the way that there are for you. And so I want the public to understand that what you guys uh, did in a full day on the 22nd, by the way, right? Six full hours on Zoom. I think we all deserve a medal for that. Uh, it was very hard. And I, I really uh, appreciate what you guys went through to get through that day. Um, so I hope that as you uh, continue doing the work, even though there is election, you have a lot of work to do. In post-election, no matter who's elected to the board, you will continue to develop your own best practices, your own team norms. Keep, um, keep thinking about this as a process that's going on uh, because no matter how good you are, in my opinion, you can always do better. And it gets easier as you have more time in the chair. So I hope you will continue to commit to that practice. So I think that's really all I have. I've, I've submitted a full report that says basically exactly what I just said, and you'll, you can all get a copy of that. And I'm open for questions uh, from the board members. If, if anyone thinks that I misrepresented something, please uh, let me in the public know. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. I, I think you characterized the, uh, the event very well. Um, and thank you for uh, facilitating and your time and, and great opportunity to learn, uh, to learn from you. Any other uh, comments from anybody on the board or any attendees at this point? Steve? Yeah. Can I make a comment? You can, and you don't even have to raise your hand, Lois. I don't? No, you just, you just spit it so, out. So, Amy, I, I imagine you don't have board members normally who are as old as I am, <laughs> but after six hours of this, I, I could hardly see for two days. <laughs> it was terrible, terrible strain on my eyes. I believe it. And I mean, that's not your fault, but I'm, I'm just, telling you that if you wind up with somebody, you know, M Methuselah like me, um, <laughs> you might want to tell them they, they need to do something to protect their eyes. That's great feedback, Lois. I, I appreciate that and I'm sorry to hear it. Thank you, Lois. Any, uh, any other comments? Um, I'll make a comment. Sure. Go ahead, Rick. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Amy for uh, all she did as well. Um, first, and I, I may be repeating some of the things that Amy said, but uh, first, this was a legal obligation I felt we had for the 2018 uh, grand jury report to make a response to that, right? And as you said, Amy, uh, no one on this present board or staff uh, was on that uh, subject to that grand jury report. Uh, but this board felt an obligation to be proactive and to continue to commit to doing the best we can and to promote civic involvement. That's how I felt about this uh, whole process. We want to promote civic involvement. And uh, I think one of the things that I'm taking away from this is you always have to be, that has to be in the back of your mind. You're thinking about particular issues and what to say, but it really matters about <laughs> how you say it and how you address people. So uh, thank you for uh, all your help in this. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And I think you're so right. And it, it's hard to remember. I mean, it's not hard to remember it. I mean, you serve the public, but it's a discipline, right? So it, it does take work. So appreciate that, those words very much. Great. Well, once again, thank you, Amy, for uh, for facilitating, and it's been a pleasure uh, meeting you and uh, and working with you. So, thanks again for all of your efforts and your time. Likewise. Okay, uh, Rick. What's, what's next on the agenda? Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, next on the agenda is Item Five B. 
prepared by, by the Director of Finance and Business Services. It's the update on the rate assistant program. Um, there's no recommendation. This is just strictly informational. Um, we'll be bringing back information on this pilot program uh, at every board meeting uh, until the board directs uh, otherwise. Effective 715 2020, the board approved a rate assistance program for water customers. For water customers, as of 7-28-2020, there are 14 approved applications and six applications pending additional paperwork. Um, and we did roll out uh, what I would consider a pretty good considerable outreach campaign through Facebook, press banner, uh, I think next door, several of the, uh, the different uh, applications that are available to the district. And I'll try to answer any questions if I can, or finance manager is on vacation. Okay. Uh, board members, any questions? Um, I'll go. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Not right now, then. Okay. okay. Uh, excuse me. Um, so, with only 20, uh, perhaps 20 people uh, signed up, it's continual, right? So, we're, we're making room for other people to. To get on later on, we still have, you know, we have a twenty-five thousand dollar budget. Twenty people aren't going to eat that up. So, um, we're are we still advertising, or are we just letting things kind of generate by themselves here? I, I, I do believe staff will, you know, after the first, you know, two or three weeks, then we'll then we'll do a re-advertising. We didn't want to go right back out and re-advertise right away just in case we got a wave of applications, but we will continue uh, advertising through our, our social media and our other forms of uh, outreach. Okay, thank you. Plus, I think, and staff are talking to customers when they call in for assistance on uh, payment arrangements and, um, uh, and uh, issues with their bill. I know our staff are informing customers when they call in. Right. Uh, Bob, you have a question or a comment? Um, I, I, just a couple of comments. I mean, clearly I would like to see the people that have historically uh, the most difficulty paying their bills be the predominant beneficiaries of this program. Um, and, and hopefully that will, will be the case once it's fully subscribed. Maybe we can take a, a look at that, at least at a percentage level. Um, I did ask Stephanie during the Budget and Finance Committee if um, uh, this um, rate assistance was retroactive, and uh, she said no, just going forward. So uh, given that we had assumed 208 people um, basically for the full year, uh, it's very possible if we don't see a uh, ramp up of um, uh, applicants here shortly that um, we'll actually end up with uh, some um, money left over, uh, assuming we stayed at two, the 208 maximum figure. So that's something to take a look at a little bit um, further down the line. Thank you, Bob. Any other uh, comments, questions from board members? And we'll continue reporting this back to the board and the finance committee. Uh, Gina, you have a question? Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair Swan. I just wanted to remind everyone, uh, including the met the attendees who were uh, in the audience, to please not use the chat function. Um, for Brown Act reasons or for, for transparency, It's we really want to have one discussion going on with the board instead of multiple discussions. Um, so if you could refrain from using the chat, uh, that's much appreciated. Thank you. That was it. Thanks, Gina. Uh, uh, okay. Your hand is still up, Gina. Let's go to the attendees. We have a question. Jim Mosier, you are recognized. You're still on mute, Jim. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, first, I would just want to thank the board for going uh, in the previous agenda item. Just I want to thank the board for uh, doing an all-day session on contentious issues um, and working.
hard on this, and I feel there has been a whole lot of progress. <clears throat> and I just want to commend the board for the work you're doing to try to improve relationships, uh, both within the board and with the public. Uh, I think it really has, uh, it, 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 your work on this has shown. <clears throat> so thank you. Um, as to the uh, rate assistance program, uh, I, of course, am a little disappointed that we have so few people signed up so far. Um, I'm wondering whether it would be worth considering spending a little money. I, I don't know what it costs to put a notice within the bills or to send uh, something uh, on the online bills to people. That might be the, a, a good way to reach people. Um, I don't know. Um, and I also wondered whether if it really is going to be this slow, whether you might want to consider um, uh, uh, doubling the amount of assistance and lowering the number of people who would get it in, in order to make this really uh, useful because $10 is, is uh, a month is it's helpful, but $20 I think would really get people's attention. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out as a possibility um, that uh, since uh, I think we, we, we all have a shared concern here, which is that during this pandemic and with people facing uh, severe, uh, many people uh, facing severe financial issues um, that uh, this may be an opportunity to give folks um, a, a, a little relief. The other thing, uh, and I, uh, Rick, I'm not sure if, I know Stephanie had done this research, I'm not sure, I'm not uh, real familiar with it, but I know the PG&E, when we looked at that, those numbers, that a number of people in the Valley aren't, who may qualify for the PG&E uh, uh, reduction in rates aren't paid. And it may be in our publicity, we could help people even more if we are to alert people. There's also this substantial reduction in uh, electricity and gas rates uh, for some people who aren't taking advantage of it. Um, and it, there, it just may be that the folks who need this most are the hardest to reach. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you, Jim. So, That's, Rick, didn't Stephanie say that um, this went out in in the um, like a newsletter with bills? I, I do believe so. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, you know, Carly's not on, uh, most senior staff are not on the, uh, at the meeting tonight. Otherwise, I would ask Carly, because she handled the outreach and with uh, Chatterbox and Stephanie. But I, I do believe we tried to get the message out. And I do believe we even, I, I think it was even in on the, on the bills. Um, but I will double check that um, and have more information for you at the next budget and finance meeting. When the when we notified the press banner, was that in the form of a press release or just a, a notice of some sort? And I'm wondering, maybe we should send something like that over to and let the staff discuss it or Carly discuss it over to like uh, the radio station, you know, and let them make mention of it. You know, there's a good uh, a good uh, following. Up. I'm sure Rosie will talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I do believe I saw it. It was like a block. Uh, a, a block statement, you know, it was definitely, it wasn't just hidden in the press banner. It was a pretty good statement about it. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it. I um, it. So, so we can, we can revisit outreach again on it. There's no problem with that and yeah. see what we can figure out. Sure. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of a slow start because it gives staff a, uh, a chance to get familiar with the process. Yeah. Um, uh, they weren't all flooded, but we, we, you know, definitely we want to see, we'd like to see the program maxed out. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have, okay. Uh, another comment, uh, uh, Rivka and, uh, Tina, I saw you had your hand up a couple of times. So if you still have a question, you can go right after, uh, Rivka Lund. Rivka? You're on mute. Unmute. There you go. You're back on mute, Rika. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Um, I was just saying, I, I, I received my yeah. bill uh, about nine hours ago, and there's no notice of it online when you get it via email. So if you guys could figure out a way to add it as attachment or in the block 
of the email itself. That might also help if people are receiving their bills electronically. Okay, good. We'll, uh, we'll let them know. Thank you. Um, Tina? You're still there. You go. Thank you, Steve. Um, I was just going to concur with Jim about, uh, you know, the numbers are low and that's uh, uh, disappointing, but um, I think that a little bit more word of mouth would help and then encouraging the staff with anybody who's having trouble paying their bill to talk to those people and, um, you know, to get, I think over time word of mouth will, will, will be helpful, but um, I also pay my bill electronically and did not get any sort of notice uh, that that was an option. And I agree with Rifka that maybe we should uh, put it in an email form um, with either with the bill or just as a general uh, general email, if that's something we want to encourage people to do. That's, sure. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because uh, yeah. I think... We're simultaneously, sorry, we're simultaneously telling people to sign up for electronic statements and then not giving them notices for the other things that are happening, right? Right. Because we had that contest going on. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Beth, you had a comment? Your hands up. Hi, thank you. Um, I also wanted to suggest, I, I think it's going to take us a few months of advertising this program to get people going. Um, and understanding what is available. Um, but I also wondered if it makes sense to reach out to some of the organizations in our community like Valley Churches United and Mountain Resources um, where people go to often, often go to get some help. Uh, it seems like we might wanna make some direct contact with them to let them know uh, that this program is being offered. That's a excellent suggestion. Thank you. Um, April? Hi, thank you. Um, I like Beth's suggestion and I wanna add to the discussion. I get a paper bill and I pay it automatically, but I still like to have the piece of paper. And in the special message on the top left, it talks about when late fees will begin. It talks about shut off for non-payment being suspended. It mentions contacting the district for assistance, but it doesn't specifically mention a rate payer assistance program based on care guidelines. So it might that might be a good place to start that in if anybody ever reads that. Thank you. Thank you, April. That's another good suggestion. Okay. Uh, anything else? Any other comments? Any more comments from the board? No? Okay. Steve, right. I have a comment. Okay, Lou? I would like to uh, second Jim Mosier's suggestion. I think it's a good one that if we continue to run low in enrollment for the program, we should seriously consider upping the contribution per person because our intent is not to underspend the, the amount we've allotted, it's to help people. Completely agree, Lou. Okay, any other uh, comment? No, nothing else. Okay. All right. Um, moving on, Rick. Okay. Moving, moving on uh, to item 6A is the public committee member uh, for the budget and finance committee. Um, uh, as per board policy, committee appointments will be reviewed by the full board at a, a board of directors meeting in December of each calendar year or as soon as thereafter practical. Applications to serve as a public member will be available at the district office or online at the district's website. Public member applications will be reviewed by the full board. Each committee member shall be appointed by a simple majority vote of the board. Regardless of the start date, Terms of public members uh, of the administration, of the administrative, budget and finance, engineering and environmental committees shall end on December 31st of each year. On June 25th, 2020, the district secretary received an email from public member uh, uh, Steve uh, Arch Archizel 
uh, resigning from the Budget and Finance Committee as a public member of the committee as he is moving out of the area. Uh, the district has advertised uh, the opening for public uh, members uh, to the Budget and Finance Committee July 13th through July 30th. Attached in your agenda are two applications that were received. Um, we do believe and we would want to confirm this that the size of the Budget and Finance Committee uh, is four. Uh, the makeup is two board members and two public members. Um, so I do believe if the committee or the board wishes to, they could appoint both. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, the chair. Thank you, Rick. Um, I have my paw up. Uh, you were the first in line, Lois, so feel free to share your comments. Okay, I um, think we ought to uh, accept both people who sent in their applications. Uh, one is a CPA and the other one, the credit union person right up my alley. Uh, so I, I, I think they could be good additions to the committee. Thank you, Lois. I tend to agree with you. Bob, you have uh, your hand up next. Um, yeah, yeah, regarding the number, number of people on the committee, committee um, um, as the have Hey, Darth Vader, hang on. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give you a minute to, to do something and fix your bandwidth there. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to drop off. I'll be right back. Uh, is that better? better? No. In the meantime, Lou, would you like to share a comment or two? Yes, I would. I would like to um, weigh in and second uh, Lois's motion that we actually put both candidates into onto the committee. Um, but I realize that we're we're waiting for Bob to make a comment and others to make comments as well. Sure. Uh, no, that's fine. Thank you, Lou. Uh, hey. Rick, go right ahead. Yes. Uh, while we're waiting for Bob, um, who is the chair of the budget and finance? I am. Oh, okay. And you support this, uh, yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I've uh, been involved in the committee process, and it started out as one member, one public member. And I'm glad to see that this board has increased it to as many members that are want to be, and uh, it encourages civic involvement. So I would support uh, both members being uh, considered for the position. Yes. Thank you, Rick. I see Bob has returned. Bob, let's uh, see if you still sound like James Earl Jones. Can't, can't do that, but is that better? Much better. Better. Yeah, so I think, I think uh, uh, Rick had already covered what I was going to say about the flexible nature of our com uh, committee assignments as part of the board policy. Um, like like Lois, I, I mean, I'm echoing what Lois says. I, the talent, <clears throat> excuse me, the talent that is available in our um, community is is astounding, and I'm very uh, pleased uh, and humbled that Rivka and Stephanie are volunteering to uh, uh, join our committee. I think they bring tremendous strengths to the uh, uh, to that those positions based on what I saw in their resumes. So I'm looking forward to voting on both of them. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the candidates or the the uh, the applicants in just a moment and let them have an opportunity to address the board and say anything they'd like to. But I see Gina has got another comment. Gina, you are recognized. Yeah, thank you, Steve. I just wanted to ask the board um, for purposes of a motion related to this item. Uh, it would be very helpful if the motion clarifies the total number of uh, seats on the committee, including the number of board members and the number of public committee members, um, just because the, the board policy manual allows that number to float, which is great, but it can lead to confusion. So it's helpful when doing this to make it clear what the total number of seats are. Thank you. Thanks, so Jim. should I say my motion is? Uh, yeah, one, one, just, just a second, Lois. But yes, you'll do that as soon as we give the two applicants an opportunity to say hi. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. So let's, uh, let me go to, uh, 
Uh, Rivka, I'm going to recognize you and give you an opportunity just to say hello and anything you care to comment to the board regarding the committee. Hi, my name is Rivka Lund. Um, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. I, I heard about the open position from Bob, um, who lives down the street from me. I'm a relatively new resident of the Valley. I've only been here for three years, but I have a passion for water conservation and I love numbers. I am a CPA former auditor, um, and I do a lot of program management as well. So um, it would be great to join and I'm, I'm happy to participate. And thank you for your vote of confidence that we can be a part of the team. Thank you, Rivka, appreciate that. Uh, Stephanie Weingarten, uh, you have an opportunity to say hi and any other comments you'd care to share? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, good evening. My name is Stephanie um, Weingarten. I've lived in Boulder Creek for over 14 years with my husband and two daughters who attend uh, BCE and now I have a middle schooler. Um, you know, we love Boulder Creek, just like most of our neighbors. We love the outdoors. We spend a lot of time outdoors um, when we're not working and doing things around the house. Um, as my resume shows, I've spent 25 years in banking, much of that in operations, um, which includes some budget, some finance, um, a lot of audit, a lot of policy and procedure. Um, Currently, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I, I attend to our operations and budgets at home. Um, I regularly volunteer at the school for the girls, and I'm on the membership committee at our church. And, you know, we just love this community, and I think that this committee would be a great way for me to serve and give back to our community. So I, I appreciate the opportunity. Hey, thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. And uh, Tina, I would like to thank you for your patience as I skipped over you uh, twice here. So you are now have an opportunity to share whatever you would like to share or comment. Uh, I'm grateful that these two people are excited about uh, with this committee and I'm glad that they have great experience. What I'm confused about is that I also applied for this committee and I have no, there's no recognition of my application. Uh, I applied that, a weeks ago, so and I haven't. I may have that may have been lost in the mail or something like that. That I didn't get an acknowledgement from Holly. So, um, yeah, I'm just a little bit confused. Oh, huh. I'm sorry. This uh, might have occurred. Do we have any? Uh, well, I don't know. The district what Secretary wants. I think to Holly would like to say something. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, I did not receive anything from you, Tina. There was nothing in the mail, nothing on an email. Okay. I have, I, I'm happy that, like I said, I'm happy about the other candidates. That's so great. Um, and it's okay if I'm not serving on this committee. I'm just a little bit confused. That's all. No, did not receive anything. Tina, how did you send it? Did you send an email or U.S. Postal or both? I, sorry, I sent it through the mail. Yeah, the mail. I printed it out and filled it out because I, I had I couldn't seem to fill it out like on my computer, so mm -hmm. that's how I did it. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm terribly sorry that occurred to you. Uh, on the positive side, we've got three and a half months, and you'll have another chance to participate again, I guess. Um, do we have, Gina, do you have any comments uh, on this or do we have any kind of a issue here? Uh, no, there's, there's no issue. Um, I, 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 you know, I believe that if the application had been received, it would have been included in the packet. Um, we'll just I'm not offended. I was just like yeah. a little lost. Yeah. No, that's a very understandable. Uh, I can I certainly understand that and sympathize with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Gina. I guess there's nothing to do with this other than get back to the business of, of uh, voting on this. So, Lois. Hey, to make my motion clear. You get to make a motion and, and include all the things that... I, I'm, I make a motion that the Budget and Finance Committee is made up of two board members, 
and uh, two committee members, um, Stephanie and Rika. Um, and the commit the should I say in this motion and remind that anybody we put on a committee right now, their time on that committee ends December 31st. Should I do that, Gina? Uh, that's that's fine, Director Henry. Um, the, the board policy manual is controlling in that regard. Okay. I'll second the motion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, to amend the motion a little bit, we're talking about this particular <coughs> will have three public representatives and two board members representing it. And, and you're recommending that both of the applicants be added to the committee. Correct, Lois? Right. I, we okay. don't have three applicants. No, well, you, have one existing, you have one existing member. No, he, he resigned. He, he's retired. He he had his last meeting. Oh, I'm time. sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I, he resigned. Okay. Yeah, so he as, resigned. She, as My, she said, we'll have four members now, two, two each. Right, gotcha. Okay, and you yeah. second it? And, and he did a yes. great job, and mm -hmm. he deserves a vote of thanks. Yes. Yes, I did second. Okay, let's move to Holly, and if you will record the vote. Holly, please. Director so Gina, Foss. Gina, Gina has her hand up then. Oh, sorry. Gina? Uh, I just wanted to clarify, so it'll have four members and four seats. I believe that's consistent with the motion that's on the table. Yeah. Correct. Yep. All right. Um, Director Fulce. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Director Ferris. Aye. President Swan. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, Rick, what's next? All right, uh, we have uh, item 6B, which is the employees, both the classified uh, employees unit memorandum of understanding and the management supervisor employee unit uh, memorandum. Uh, and to present this item, Council Nichols will present this item to the board. Thank you. Um, so as you can see in the, the memo, um, well, if, if you'll refer to the memo, you'll see that it has links to both the uh, memorandum of understanding between the district and its management um, employee uh, group and the link to the memor memorandum of understanding with the classif classified employees union. Um, all of the employees in the district are members of one of those two groups, except for the district manager. Um, those documents set forth um, most of the terms and conditions of employment of the folks in those respective groups. Um, both documents uh, come up for potential renegotiation starting in about a month, the window for giving notice of intent uh, to make any modifications um, to those, to either of those MOUs starts on um, September 2nd and it closes on October 2nd. Um, the district manager has, has um, obtained information from each of the two employee groups that neither one of them intends to request uh, to enter into negotiations regarding the MOUs and what that means under the terms of the MOUs is that they will automatically renew on their current terms for another year starting this January uh, through the end of 2021 um, with the caveat that if the district wishes to open the uh, MOUs for negotiation, um, it may do so. Um, and the reason we're talking about this item in open session is that under the Brown Act, um, the only way to conduct a closed session with respect to labor negotiations is to first appoint 
negotiators, and then we can conduct closed sessions where the board meets with the negotiators and instructs them regarding the district's um, negotiating position. So the purpose of this open session item is to determine if the board wants to um, give notice of intent to um, renegotiate or modify either or both of the MOUs and um, appoint negotiators for that purpose. And it would be typical to appoint the district manager for um, uh, the role of negotiator. And I'm available to serve in that role as well if the board desires. Um, and with that, I'll answer any questions the board may have about this item. Gina? Okay, do we have any uh, any questions for Gina? Uh, okay. okay, I do. Bob is first, Lou is second, Rick okay. is third, I'll be fourth. Okay. Oh, Bob. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, Gina, so um, assuming that um, neither side opens negotiations, um, what is the sort of net effect uh, for next year you know, relative to, as you were saying, uh, terms remain in effect. Are there, um, are there raises involved? Is, is other changes in the agreement? Sure. sure, yeah, I'm happy to address that. Um, the main, well, the agreements will stay in place exactly as written, um, mm -hmm. but uh, with one caveat, I suppose, which is, at the very end of the agreements, if you look at them, there's a salary schedule that you'll see there. And I believe the last one that's attached to the agreement was for um, 2018. Uh, they were updated for the first couple or few years of the agreement with um, COLA amounts that went into effect under the agreements each year. Um, uh, new tables haven't been issued recently, but uh, Essentially, what happens is that those salary tables remain in effect, except that the annual ACOLA that applies under each of the two MOUs gets added or uh, you know multiplied against the salary schedule to create a new salary schedule for the current year. Okay, so what you're saying is that whatever the salaries are that are in place now will get raised 3% uh, starting January 1st. Yeah, for the classified unit, um, the number, the value is 3%. Each year, the salary table, all the values in the salary table go up by 3%. For the management MOU, uh, it's not a set 3%. There's a inflationary index that's used, which is the uh, San Francisco Area Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics CPI number. That was 3.7% for last year and it's 2.0 percent for this year uh, so essentially two the management employee salary table will go up by two percent in January if no changes are made to the MOU great thank you Lou your turn thanks Steve uh, Gina is there any limit to the number of negotiators that we can nominate and also is there any restriction on the qualifications for those negotiators uh, there is not. No restrictions and no set qualifications. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Uh, Rick, you were next. Yes, thank you. Uh, for Gina again. Uh, so how long is the MOU contract for? The original term was three years. The three years expired at the end of uh, twenty. 19, no, I'm sorry, it expired at the end of, yeah, that's right. The three years expired at the end of 2019, so about six months ago. Uh, after the expiration of the initial three years, it gets renewed automatically, if not for another year, if not open. So last year, when neither party gave notice, it um, renewed automatically for another year through the end of 2020. And if neither party gives notice this year, it'll renew automatically for another year through the end of 2021. And, and that could be for a, a longer period of time as well, just keep on rolling over? That's right. It will keep on rolling over, um, you know, in theory forever if no party ever gives notice of an intent to 
renegotiate or modify it. Okay, and just to, for clarity here, so the COLA uh, for this year, will we, it's pegged to the uh, inflation index, which is 2%. So what we read as a 3% COLA will actually be 2% for this year? Uh, well, for the classified employees, it's a fixed 3% each year. So okay. they'll get 3%. And for the management employees, it's pegged to an inflationary index, which will be 2.0% for this year, or as of Jan the beginning of January. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Gina, you, my question was answered in that uh, discourse. So thank you. Uh, any other uh, comments from the board or discussion areas, or should we hear from the, we can hear from the attendees first and then we can come back and discuss some more. Uh, do we have any comments from the attendees on this subject? I don't see any hands coming up. We'll go back to the board. Okay. Uh, okay, so board, fellow board members, what are our thoughts with respect to uh, identifying negotiators should we want to? Lou? Yes, thank you, Steve. Gina, one more question. Is there any effect uh, to the benefits that you, because you were really addressing the salary, correct? I mean, is there any additional impact to the benefit, benefit section of the compensation? The automatic renewal won't have any impact on the benefits. They'll remain at current levels unless changed via negotiation. Thank you. Uh, Bob? Yeah, but, but of course the cost for those benefits goes up every year by, you know, some percentage, 5%. I think it was last year or something like that. So there, there is an inflationary uh, impact there as well. Right. In the MOU, it's it's the the way I understand it from Stephanie is the benefits have a particular package and the cost of those package from our insurance carriers goes up every year by some amount and that amount can be uh, basically whatever the insurance carrier decides it's going to be. Um, I think the last couple of years it's been relatively modest, but I believe before that it was uh, substantial. So. It really is, it's going to be variable until we hear from them what the rates are going to be. We don't really know. And I think that happens, and I forget exactly when that's going to happen, but it'll be part of the budget committee process as we start looking at next year's budget. So do, what do we think we want to do, fellow board members? Do we have a, a feeling one way or the other, whether we want to renegotiate with the um, with the employees and management, or do we want to let it ride as it has been? Given the circumstances in the country and in the state, uh, there's a lot of financial pressure on everybody in a lot of different areas. And uh, I don't know that this wouldn't be one of those opportunities where it might be prudent to take a look at the, the, uh, the agreements that are currently in place. Um, anybody else have any similar thoughts or other thoughts? Bob? Lois. Lois. I, um, I'm not for negotiating. I, the staff doesn't want to negotiate. And I respect um, their feelings on that. Uh, so I'm not for negotiating. I... Our staff's been through a lot in the, I mean, first they had the PG&E outings and they were working themselves into exhaustion, making sure everybody had water. And now they've been dealing with this virus, but they're still out there doing their job. And I, I'm really proud of our staff. And if they don't want to negotiate, I, I uh, don't want to force the issue. Thank you, Lois. Uh, other thoughts? Bob, you had your hand up for a moment. 
No, I think Lois uh, covered it pretty well. Okay, so uh, in lieu of not hearing any motions to appoint negotiators, then uh, I'm guessing that we, I guess the motion is, do we need a motion to not appoint somebody, Gina? No, if the board is not going to appoint somebody, there's no action that needs to be taken. Okay. Then uh, not seeing any hands, nothing from the attendees or panelists, then we'll just move on. Rick, what's new? What's next? Um, hang on a second. What's next is the consent agenda. Uh, I'm and sorry. Do we need to take that to the public? Okay. I think you did. You did. You did. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Uh, next would be consent agenda, Chair okay. Fon, and in which we have the minutes of the board of directors meeting for July 16th. Right. Is there any reports from the minutes? Nobody wants to pull anything from the minutes. Okay. Uh, district reports. Anybody want to comment on them or shall we just accept them as is? They're all in there to read. Okay. Uh, no written communication. Um, I just had one question on district reports. Yeah. So, so Rick, um, could you give us a quick rundown on where we are in the construction projects, just for the public's benefit here? A quick rundown, okay. Um, <laughs> well, as quick as you can make it. I think it's an important uh, topic since we should be getting close to uh, breaking ground. Okay, you, uh, you're just saying you're you're referring to the the pipeline projects then. Well, the pipeline projects, oh, yeah, the oh, two that are scheduled for this year. <laughs> don't 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 get a heart attack over the. That made it easy. I think we we went an hour today at engineering committee and barely scratched them, but it was a, it was a good discussion. Uh, right. The 2020 pipelines that are in construction or are been out to bid and been awarded to Anderson Pacific will break ground starting uh, Monday. Uh, on, on Hillside Terrace and Fern, which is North Boulder Creek, out in the Riverside Grove area. I do believe it's roughly 1,500 lineal feet of eight inch main. We have done extensive outreach with letters and emails to the uh, customers that will be affected in the, in the uh, construction area. Um, I did emails up to tonight and there's a, a kickoff meeting, construction meeting on site starting at 7.30 Monday morning. They, as soon as they complete the hillside, they move straight to California Drive um, and uh, do the California Drive, which is roughly, I think, 2,000 plus lineal feet of six inch. Um, so we're, we're breaking ground. The other two 2020 pipeline projects are in design, which are the Highway 236 Big Basin Way project that uh, the design consultant engineers are finishing up on the design of that project. Uh, and the second project is the Quail Hollow project that I do believe has been designed and is going through, uh, I think, the final parts of environmental. Um, both of those projects will be bidded uh, late fall uh, and break construction early spring. Um, we're moving right along on those on those two projects. Those are the two major projects of the four pipelines. Um, um, and when when do we expect the construction to be completed on California Drive? I don't have that in front of me. I yeah, do no, wor no worries. But it, it's I do before the rain. Year, I think by the the end of the year that uh, the uh, four pipe or the two pipeline projects are supposed to be completed in twenty twenty. Okay. Okay, great. Well, Thank you, an easy project, so I imagine, I think it was 59 days for uh, um, Hillside, and so I imagine it'd be a little bit longer than that for California. California Drive is going to be a much easier project because the, the, the traffic is not as restrictive as Hillside. Hillside's very one lane, at least California Drive, I think you'll be able to, and there's several ingress and egress, so it's not one way in, one way out. A lot of loops on California Drive, flat ground. Uh, it'll go, I think, quicker than the the hillside project. 
and 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 Mr. Moran will be straw bossing it all the way. Right, he's going to be the go-to guy in the neighborhood. So we're prepping yeah. him. Um, lemonade stand out front, the whole nine yards. It'll be popular. I want a, I want a hard hat and a vest. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Yeah. Lois, I see your Smurf-like hand up. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to tell everyone, be sure to read uh, the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency report. They're going to start getting more and more involved. Um, this one happens to be for June. Um, the meeting we had in July started bringing up surface water. We're going to be hearing more about surface water. Um, and you might want to pay attention to that. And the meetings are getting more and more technical. And um, we have been working with our, our um, geologist, not geologist. Hydrogeologist. Yeah, I, anyway, uh, we've been working with him, uh, Lou and I and uh, Rick um, with our hydrologist um, and he's been a big help and helping us out. Um, uh, Lou's been working on some issues of his own, and I think some of you might have seen, I don't know if you saw any of the emails um, about, I say this wrong every time, ASRs, right? Did I say that right, Lou? Shake your head if I yeah. did. Okay. I, I say that wrong all the time. I. That's something we want to be careful about. That's something we need to be uh, more informed about. Uh, it could cause possible uh, problems with our the quality of our water. You want to tell them what it is, Lou, real quick, what an ASR is. Do, do we need to agendize this? I was going to say we're getting. Uh, we're getting. Uh, I think we're getting. Yeah, the, uh, I'm just bringing up what's happening in Santa Monica. No, it, it's it's very important, but I think we need to agendize this. Okay. All right. Here. We'll agendize it then. Sorry. You I do tried have, to sneak in one, and Rick wouldn't let me. Yeah, well, you do have the Santa Margarita groundwater report in this uh, in the committee reports, but I wouldn't get too far into the weeds. It's just kind of. Okay. Uh, yes, I know. I know. I just got carried away. I, I will say that our two directors, uh, Ferris and, and Henry, are spending an incredible amount of time and are representing the district well. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they're leading uh, the JPA on great questions to do with uh, finance, water quality, um, uh, surface water. Uh, they're, we're very engaged in... Uh, uh, it's really, uh, it's great to see SLV has, has taken a lead here. Um, this could be a substantial cost to this district, um, and it could have water quality issues. And all of these issues, I don't think we're, we're sure that this is the best for San Lorenzo Valley at this well, point let's, in time. There's let's a, let's agendize it so we can have an in-depth yeah, conversation. Okay. Yeah, please. And I just did what I told Lois not to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. Okay. It sounds like we got a, a lively topic worth agendizing. Uh, so. uh, our board's really doing a great job. And, uh, and that's great to hear. Congratulations yeah. and thank you to Lois and to Lou. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, no written communication. Uh, uh, Steve? Since yeah. we're on kind of committee reports and things like that, um, yeah. and the consent agenda, I uh, think it's appropriate time. I just want to say that it's been um, an improvement with the minutes for all the committees, um, the publication of them, uh, the availability of the video for the board meetings has been quicker response. Um, and I just want to acknowledge uh, who's ever been involved in that, that I appreciate that. It's much easier. I can read the minutes and I get a uh, understanding of what's going on in that committee, or um, and it's prompt. So thank you for doing that. That's Holly. Thank you. Very good.
Absolutely. Thanks, Holly. Uh, I think Darth Vader sends his respects too. <laughs> I love that Darth Vader. Sorry. <laughs> Bob, I'm sorry. You make a great Darth Vader. You even have black on. <laughs> black helmet. Oh, is it blue? Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all. Um, I think we'll call this a, call this a day. Uh, we will adjourn this meeting until the next uh, the next uh, the next time, and uh, hope you all have a nice evening. And uh, we'll talk to you all.